So it's the perfect day to stay indoors and do some crafts. And I thought I would share with you the latest craft that I'm working with and that is turning an old set of Christmas lights into a pomegranate garlic. Great. We're going to be making our pomegranates from old Christmas balls, old Christmas lights, and a string of old Christmas lights. And I thought it would be a great way to reuse articles that I'm sure everybody has and wants to make something useful out of it. So this is a very easy technique and it is something that everyone can do. And we're going to be using crepe paper to create these pomegranates. So for this project, we're going to need some string, some crepe paper in various colors, floral tape, wire on a paddle, some snippers, magic markers, oil pastels. We're going to need old Christmas bulbs. We're going to need some old Christmas balls star anise, some scissors, and a glue gun. So the inspiration for the garland was actually using all the different various stages of growth of the pomegranate. And the pomegranate grows from little tiny buds like this that are coral in color with a little yellow stub to elongated, elongated fruit that has a little crown around it with a yellow center. And then of course, as the pomegranate grows, it goes from this stage, which is a small pomegranate, and then grows into a fully grown pomegranate. The first thing I did was I grabbed some supplies from sto my storage and grabbed a couple of strings of light. So I started off with my string of lights like this, just old Christmas lights and I doubled the strand so that my lights were more evenly spaced. And then I came in with the paddle wire and wired the two strands together just so that um, they were easier to add my ornaments later on. And then I just grabbed an inexpensive garland from the dollar store and I just took this and wrapped it around the garland just to give me some, a bit of a background of leaves. And then once I wrapped it around the wire, I came back in and then I used my floral tape and wrapped all three together. So it created a very great support system in order to start adding. So we're going to start off with the Christmas ball and now we need to measure the Christmas ball in order to cut our piece of paper. And we're going to be cutting our crepe paper as a rectangle. So then you just take your piece of string and you want to measure the diameter of the ball. And the diameter of the ball is seven inches. The height from, from the collar to the middle of the ball is three and a half inches. And the height, we want to add an additional quarter of an inch. That is going to account for the tip. So we want an additional quarter of an inch on the height. We want to shorten the diameter by one or two inches. And in my case, because my Crepe paper has a lot of stretch. The diameter is seven inches and I'm going to reduce it down to five inches because what I want to be able to do is pull the paper and stretch it around the ball so it starts to conform to the shape. Now you can test how stretchy your crepe paper is by just taking a scrap and pulling it apart. Crepe paper is going to come in rolls like this and it has lines that go up and down. And the lines that are going up and down, there is, you cannot stretch. But opposite to the lines, if you take it, you can stretch the paper. So you have to be always 
cognizant of the way that your paper stretches. So if you've bought crepe paper in order to be able to tell how much stretch there is, just take a little scrap piece of paper and stretch it out. So you can see that this is like a little elastic band. It stretches quite a bit, but it's stretching it on the opposite direction of those lines. So those lines are going up and down. It's going to apply to our diameter. Remember I said the diameter is seven inches, but we're actually gonna cut our piece of paper to five inches because we're gonna have two inches to stretch this. The height does not stretch, it stays in place. I'm gonna lay the bowl like this and we're going to position it so it's so. And then we want to pull the paper in the middle in it until it overlaps. We're gonna pull it until it overlaps and you see the paper is conforming to the shape of the ball. Lap it and just make sure you've got enough paper that you're gonna be able to glue it to um, the center of this ball. And of course you can move the ball around. So we're basically, we're on the shape that we want. And then I just hold it like this, separate the paper. I'm gonna take my glue gun and you just want a bead of glue and then just overlap that. Overlap it so the paper glues together. Then you want to position your little bulb like so and you wanna create a little bit of a crease. Just squish it together so it's a little closer together. And now we're just gonna add a bead of glue on the inside and push this down as close to the collar as we can and hold it for a minute until it glues. Here we are. And I'm gonna put substantial glue in there. And then I'm just gonna come back and push it into place. I need to look at it from this angle. Pushing it into place until it's glued like so. And if all the little pieces don't glue, you can go back in and just add a couple of drops, tack it down, and it is perfectly sealed. Now you've got the other side, which is still open. And I forgot to mention at this point, you want to, and I should have done this before, but while you have while you have your rectangle piece of paper, your lines are going up and down, and you just wanna make a whole bunch of little tiny cuts about a quarter of an inch down. But I forgot to do that, so I'll do it now. So I should have done that before. So you see I've just cut it. Create the little feathery fringe at the bottom of the pomegranate like this. But before we seal that up, we're gonna take a little piece of yellow like this. The stripes are up and down, so it stretches this way. And you just want about an inch and a half. And here, we're gonna just make tiny little cuts. So they're tiny little cuts like that. And then all we're going to do is we're gonna roll this up, just rolling it up, then we're gonna add one bead of glue at the end and roll it so that we've got this little center. So we'll put our little center to the side. And now I want to create a bead of glue in the middle and I'm going to start pushing this down. So I want it You want a fair amount of glue in there. And then you're just going to come in and push, push these into place. And I'm just gonna open it up. I'm gonna look right for the center. I'm 
gonna add a big blob of blue. And then I'm gonna take our little green centerpiece, stamen, and I'm gonna position it as close to the center as I can. And then I'm gonna push the rest of that crepe paper around it to create this effect. I'm using low temperature glue, so it takes a little bit longer to hold it in place. So now I've got this, and you can use Pomegranates have um, a crown, what looks like a little crown around the bottom. So you, can, so you can either create your crown by taking a quarter inch height of a different color crepe paper. Remember, it stretches this way. And then fold it over and cut out little triangles. So you can cut out little triangles and you get this little crown and then you can come back and you can come back and use the little crown to top off the base of your pomegranate if they're smaller or for the larger pomegranates I use star anise which is it looks like a star and it smells like an ease. It smells really good. And these little pods, they come off very easily, but when you turn them on the side, they look like the little pieces of the crown. So all I've done is I've taken five little pieces and then I've just put a dab of glue and I've taken each little triangle and glued it around the base. And it looks really realistic. The fragrance doesn't stay forever, but it does smell nice while you're making it. And then you just wanna press them down and hold them in place. So then you glue it down and you end up getting this effect, which is really cute. Now this looks nicer on the larger pomegranates, like this size. For the smaller pomegranates, I just left it without using a crown and just left it, it furled at the end. Now in terms of the leaves for these, the leaves are quite simple. And you're just going to take, um, and you want your leaves, the length of the leaves are going to depend on the size of your fruit. If it's a larger pomegranate, then you're going to need larger pieces. So for this mid-size pomegranate, I'm just going to take a piece of green crepe paper and I'm going to cut it to a width of about one and a half inches, which is this, wa this way where it stretches. And this is about three inches long. So I'm just going to fold it over and I'm just gonna cut it wherever I want the lengths of my leaves to be. So these leaves are gonna be longer, these leaves are gonna be shorter, which is fine, it gives me two variations. And then I'm just gonna take my little folded piece and I'm going to cut, again, what looks like an eye, a very simple shape. like this. So I'm gonna cut a very simple shape like this. And this is going to, um, this is the shape that I'm going to use for all my leaves. Now what happens, and I do this, now we've got our two leaves layered. And what I do, I take the leaf right in the center and I stretch it. And now I've created these two beautiful leaves. And it's as simple as that. And then I take one leaf, 
I add a dab of glue. I take the leaf, one leaf I have turned down, and then I add the other one. And to this leaf, I turn it up. So I've got one leaf that's turned down, one leaf that's turned up, and it really creates a nice effect. And you can leave it with two leaves, three leaves, however many leaves you want, but since I've got this extra little piece, this is a slightly shorter, so it's going to give me two shorter leaves. I'm gonna cut the exact same shape again. And you just want a simple shape like that, then cup, and that gives me two more really cute little leaves. They're perfectly shaped. Nicer in odd numbers. So I'm going to add another leaf just on top. So you've got a group of three. And then I'm gonna put one straggler on the other side. So it looks like that. So I got a group of three and one, but really, it's whatever looks good to you. And now here's the fun part where you need to have oil pastels. And the oil pastels work very nicely on the paper. They also blend really nicely. And I forgot to mention, we're gonna need a couple of Q-tips and I use Q-tips to blend the colors. So all I want to do, and you can be creative in how you um, highlight your fruit, but basically I'm going to add some dark brown to match the color of my star anise that I've created for this, uh, the end of the fruit. I'm going to add some brown around the base. So you just add brown like that. And then I come in and I take my Q-tip and I blend it right into the paper. So this is just giving the fruit more dimension and some shadows. And then for the highlight, I'm gonna add highlights on the roundest part of the fruit. You just take any color you want. I'm gonna use this orange. I'll put a highlight there. And then a highlight here, a highlight there. And I'm gonna add one more highlight of yellow, just one spot. And I blend it in. And then of course, once it's on your garland, then you're just creating some variation. I think it looks better in real life. Pomegranate. It's got its little highlight, their little leaves. You could uh, definitely add more highlights if you wanted. I don't think it's necessary. The technique is going to be the same regardless of the size of the ball that you're using so that you can create these tiny little buds. Same technique. Bulbs. If you don't have tiny little bulbs, you can use styrofoam balls and then take a bit of the floral wire and create your own hoop and then just glue it into the styrofoam. And this is a different shape which the pomegranate takes somewhat this shape in its uh, growth stages. And this shape we are going to create from our old light bulb. So for this, 
The technique is exactly the same. I take my string, I measure it, and I take it a little bit above here so that it goes a little bit above the collar. Measure your length or the height of your paper. Measure the diameter of the bulb. So I've already done that. And for these large bulbs, which I believe are pretty standard, I'm going to cut a piece of paper that is three inches in height, and that's going in the same direction as the lines of the crepe paper. And I'm going to cut it to two and a half inches in width. And that gives me about half an inch stretch to go around the bulb. So now that I've cut my paper, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I want to have this overhang at the end. So, and it gives me a little bit of paper around the, um, the part that screws into. And I take it, I stretch my paper to conform around the shape like that. Take your bead, take your bead of glue, overlap it. So I've overlapped it and glued it in place. It comes up a little bit on the screwed part. So I'm just gonna pull it down enough so that I've got this overlap like so. I'm gonna just glue, drop a bead of glue. So I've just, I've just glued it around here, leaving this extra overlap. Take a little piece, that might even be too much, but I take a piece of my floral tape and I add it to the base. And then I just pull and twist, pull it and twist it to cover the end of the bulb. And I've still got this left. So then I'm going to take my little piece of yellow paper and just cut a little fringe, roll it up. I'm going to put it right on the tip of the bulb like so, and just let it glue. Now at this point, this is a much smaller bulb. Cut the fringe, or you can cut your little crown a different color to add to the end. Or what I've also done is just, I flared out the paper without cutting it. And this looks cute too. So I just flared it out without cutting it. And then I came back in and added glue at the end of the bowl. And then I just gently pushed the crepe paper in to conform around that little yellow tip. And they look really cute just like that. So now I've got my, not 100% perfect rectangle, but now I've got my rectangle. The lines are going up and down. I fold it in half, very long, but that's okay. So then I grab my leaf wherever I, I like, and then I stretch it just in the middle. And that gives me two very interesting little petals. Before I add the leaves to my bulb, I'm gonna give it a little bit of definition and I'm gonna color it a bit. And of course, this is all optional. Just stained the tips of the pomegranate, um, making it look more realistic. So if you wanted to do that in this case, just to give it more definition, just gives it a little bit gives it more definition to the center of your pomegranate fruit. And then I'm gonna take some yellow. And I just give it a little bit of highlight, but I think it transforms it um, from looking like a light bulb 
into a fruit. And then I've got my elongated fruit. Now, in order to secure these, I actually should have done this before, but I can do it now, is I just take a little piece of wire, piece of wire and cut it like a horseshoe. So I've glued it on both sides and then I take my floral tape and I'm going to come back and wrap it. Something to hang your fruit from. So I'll be able to take this and add it to my garland. Then for the last pomegranate, we're going to actually use the light right on the, um, the string of lights. I'm not gonna remove it. Maybe my height, which was two inches, and I added a quarter of an inch to create the little crown at the end. And then the lights, they are pretty well all the same size. The height for my light is going to be two and a quarter inches high which is running with the direction of the grain and the diameter or the width of my paper is going to be two inches and that's going to give me about half an inch stretch so just like the other bulbs i take my little piece of paper then i'm going to take my bead of glue that green kind of looks like the base of the larger bulb that we made so I know I've got a nice overlap, and now I'm just going to take this and I'm gonna glue it around the collar. And I'm going to add some yellow on inside here. I'll just cut. So we've got our little, we've got a little fringe. Add the glue to the bottom of that little, of the center. And I'm just gonna glue it to the tip of the bulb like so, added glue inside, and then I just push this together, give it a little definition, just to accentuate. That's really cute. Look how cute those are. So there you've got one leaf up, one leaf down. Oh, there's lots of little strings of glue and that's it very adorable like um, when i was adding these it makes it handy if you hang it from um, a doorway and it just helps you take a look at the garland while it's hanging if you decide to use the garland laying down, then you most certainly can then position all your fruit the way you like. But one thing that has really helped is actually attaching the smaller fruit. I've attached it directly to a pine cone and then I can come in with this extra little piece of wire anchors the fruit a little bit more so that it really stands out on the garland. Small fruit to the pine cone, it gives it a place to rest. It just makes it easier to position. So I'm planning on using my pomegranates in this garland that I'm going to hang from a mirror, but this would look equally beautiful um, if I had this garland draped along my buffet or my sideboard. Um, I'm also going to make some extra so that I can use them in floral decorations or just in a bowl. So here are some. So here you have it. This is how you make crepe paper pomegranates. I think they look beautiful. I love the way that they turned out. I'm also using up all my Christmas, uh, my old Christmas bulbs and Christmas lights and Christmas balls, which is a great bonus. 
Um, but these are not just for Christmas. You can use them in spring bouquets. You can use them at fall for Thanksgiving. They'll look beautiful in any arrangement. Thank you.